I'm nine and a half thousand feet up in Copper Canyon, Mexico. I'm stuck on a ledge and there's no way down. Okay. My only option is to climb back up and face a freezing night at the top. <laughs> then on my right hand side, I spot what could be another route down. But to get to it, I'll have to cross a deep gully. I'm going to see if I can make this leap across there. Okay. It's eight foot wide and I've got no run up. Okay, when I'm off the top of that, I'm across this gully and look, all of this now looks quite manageable. I'm now at 7,000 feet, and for every 1,000 feet I drop, the temperature will rise 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's tempting to go on, but I'm running out of time. There's a good tip that I know for working out just how much daylight is left, and what you do is you measure the distance from the sun down to the horizon. The technique for doing it is if you put your hand up, you put the sun just above your fingers, and then each finger down to the horizon is 15 minutes. So hand, four fingers, one hour, that, down, two hours. So I've got about two hours of daylight left, so it's time to get a shelter found. 40 million years ago, masses of volcanic ash and lava were deposited here. The flowing lava cut deep fissures in the land to form the canyons. The base of volcanic cliffs are often riddled with caves, and finding one is my best chance of shelter but I need to be careful where I put my hands here. There's fallen rocks everywhere, and this is exactly where scorpions and tarantulas live. Oh, here's one. Here we go. Look at this, see this? Tiger scorpion. And these are, these are quite common around here. Look, he's pretty cheesed off. <laughs> but he's a predator. He will live off like other bugs and insects. And look, since I put the stick there, a strike, look, he's trying to get to it. Uh, but actually, these are good protein. You can eat these. Uh, they're not meant to taste very nice, but what I want to do, actually, is just cut off his stinger, which is this bit here. It's that ball, like a ball of venom with a little stinger on the end of it. Uh, pin him down, and then just take that off. Here you go, you see him there. Uh, but that's all good to eat. Uh, tastes like kind of cheese that's been sitting around for about three weeks. But worse. Five species of scorpions live in the canyons, and all of them sting. The symptoms include numbness, a tightening of the throat, and sharp pains. Without medication, they can be deadly. Hey! Yeah, this! Here's what I was hoping for. Look at this decent sized cave, and this is going to be perfect for me to spend the night in. I feel miles from anywhere, but I can see that someone has been here before me. Just look at the roof of this, covered in all of, all of this like soot uh, from loads of fires, and even a shelf. Let you see this like hole that's obviously, that's obviously man made. It's no surprise to find signs of human activity here. The Aztecs once used these caves, but for the last 400 years, they've been home to the Raramuri Indians. They still live here today. These nomadic people move from cave to cave as they travel the canyons. Someone's been here recently. They've moved on, but they have left something behind. Look at that, a bit of wire. And it might not look like much, but actually, there are loads of different things I could use that for. Ah, so that's good for me. I'm going to keep hold of this. The charcoal on the cave roof shows that many fires have been lit here before, and that's what I need. It'll keep out the freezing night air. 
you might not always be lucky enough to have a flint striker with you. So what I'm going to do is use this yucca uh, to make a fire saw. And a fire saw is just a friction fire and this yucca is really good for this uh, because it's light and it's really dry wood. And all I need to do is break it here, then remove the base and start to split the wood into strips. Cut out two pieces, about 12 inches long. The sotol plant grows all over these slopes and the leaves make excellent cordage. And I just get this little bit of tinder, a little bit of dried grass, put it against one piece of the yucca, bit of stone on one side and the same on the other. So there can be an airflow uh, between the two bits of wood and press that against itself so it's like that and then just bind that. Wrap one end tight, do the same thing at the other end and the job is done. And then that's the bottom bit of the, the fire saw built and then all I did with this was again just peel it away from the main branch and that then acts as the fire saw that I actually drive with to create the friction. Now to put it to the test. It's really important to do this so the base of this isn't going to wobble. And here we go, this is pretty solid there now. And I just take the fire saw and start to move it along it. The great thing about using yucca is it's got the lowest ignition temperature of any of the woods around here, which makes it ideal for trying to make a bit of an ember. And that's all I need, just a little bit of an ember to drop between these two bits of wood into that tinder. And I better shut up, stop talking, and get sorry. And yeah, look at that. And once you got to this stage, this ember is actually going to keep burning. So the tire pressure comes off. And then I just poke it through the bottom there, tip it into there. Once the ember's surrounded by a good bundle of dried grass, it literally goes up in flames. There we go. Whoa. OK, we've got fire. Now I can sit back and watch the sun go down, knowing that tonight I should be warm. So much of this canyon land here is just so remote. And for me, just sitting here with a fire going and a view like this, really, it just feels, just feels like a real privilege, you know?